Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and welcome to the show, y'all. Thought you got away, did you? Come on, man, let's go. He ain't gonna make it. I'm gonna make sure. So here we are, y'all. His name is Wayne, y'all. And when he was about three years old, his parents were in the other room while he slept. They were in there using drugs. And they OD'd. And he was crying because he's a baby. He's in the next room. He's crying. He doesn't know what's going on in the living room. All he knows is that nobody has come in there to change him, to feed him, to pick him up, nothing. So he's crying and he's crying. He's getting louder and louder. And after several hours of this crying, because they lived in an apartment building that had thin walls, the neighbors, they come to the to the apartment, knocking on the door. Nobody's answering. But they hear the baby inside crying. They hear Wayne in there crying. So they go to the manager of the building and they tell the manager that it's a baby in this apartment crying and nobody's answering the door. And he asks, what has that got to do with you? And they said, this baby's been crying for hours and hours. So the manager finally is persuaded to come to the apartment come to the apartment room and open the door and when he opens the door they see a man and a woman laying one on the couch and one on the floor unconscious they see drugs and needles all over the place and they hear this baby crying so one of the ladies that was with him one of the ladies that insisted that he come up there and unlock this apartment so they can see what's wrong with this baby. She goes into the next room and he's laying in the bed on his back. His diaper is sore. She picks him up and she comforts him, but he's crying and his snot is coming out of his nose and he's crying. And so she, she takes him and she looks around. She tries to find some diapers. She sees a diaper bag. She grabs the diaper bag and she changes him. She wipes his face clean, but she doesn't take him into the next room. She holds him and comforts him and rocks him in the chair. She gives him his bottle so that she could feed him and make sure that he was okay. And when she gets him to sleep, she walks him through the apartment complex and takes him to her apartment. Now, in the meantime, the manager had called the police and they were there now. And the mother when they took both of them down, they pronounced the husband, the father, dead on the scene of an apparent overdose. But the mother, they got a pulse. So they were rushing her to the hospital. Now, Wayne, in the meantime, in between time, he's with this neighbor. and She's taking care of him. But this can't be the long-term plan. So the uh, authorities, they come and they say, look, we're going to put the child in protective services. So when they put the child in protective services, they call the next of kin. And the next of kin that they were able to reach is the grandmother on the mother's side. So once they contact her and tell her what happened, she comes down right away to pick up Wayne and she takes him with her. Now, his mother is still in the hospital and she's teetering back and forth with life, playing the game, doing what her body is doing, what happens when you feel your body full of drugs. It's in and out. They're not sure she's going to make it. But when she wakes up in the hospital bed, she's not strapped to the bed at all. She looks around and she says, where's Wayne? 
and she knows that something has happened because she the last thing she remembered was putting a needle in her arm. So the, the nurse that was there in attendance told her that, look, your son is in protective services and he's okay. But your husband is dead. She lay there in the bed crying, tears rolling down her face. And the nurse, she was at her wit's end. She was like, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Because she had no sympathy for her. She had no sympathy for her. Because she had seen this play out over and over and over again in this particular neighborhood. And she was numb. She said, you got high with your son in the next room. She said, both of y'all could have died. What would he be doing then? How would he live without both of his parents, knowing when he grows up that he's going to find out that both of his parents died from a drug overdose? So his mother, Wayne's mother, lay there in the bed and she's crying. She's saying that she's sorry. And the nurse tells her, don't say you're sorry to me. You need to get your life together and show that you're sorry to your son. So weeks go by, days, go, months go by. She's finally uh, visited by the police. She has major damage. Now she's in recovery. She has major damage. She's in a rehab facility. And they talk to her about what happened. And she tells them that she was feeling sick. And her husband went out to buy some drugs to help her get through her sickness that morning. That's what these drugs will do to you. So when he went out and he got these drugs, he came back and they both shot. Him. When I say shot dope, I mean use the needle, right? She said he went first and she said he nodded out and she said that's normal. So she didn't really think anything of it. So she proceeded to inject herself with the drugs. She said she didn't even know he had died within seconds of using the drugs. She just thought that he had done what a lot of people do when they use that particular drug, nod it out, they're using heroin. So she went on and she shot the drugs and she nodded out as well. And she said the next thing she knew, she woke up in the hospital. So the police said, do you know where he got these drugs from? So she gave him the local, they, she gave them the local drug dealer's name. She told them who they would normally buy their drugs from. The police officer wrote his name down. She's not thinking of what's going to happen next. So the police officer gets all the information and he leaves. And she's still in rehab for weeks after that, not knowing that the police had arrested the local drug dealer and charged him with second degree murder. Because if you sell somebody drugs and they die as a result of using those drugs, you can be charged with murder. And that's what happened to him. So now they got him in jail. And while he's in jail, he's going through what everybody else goes through when they get arrested, trying to beat the case and, and get out of this and get out of that. So he calls home. He tries to get some of the homies to go say something to her because she's the only witness and he knows that she's got to be the witness. And they do. They bump down on her. And they go give her drugs and they give her money and they tell her this and they tell her that. And she's telling them whatever it is that she needs to tell them so that they'll continue to feed her habit. In the meantime, she hadn't even been by her mother's house to check on her son, Wayne. She's out in the streets. And she's using heavy, heavy, not concerned about anything that's going on. So after a while, people start talking. Is she going to show up? She's a hot mess. The, the DA is not sure if he wants to use her as a witness because she's gone on these drugs. So they ended up arresting her. They caught her with some drugs. They arrested her and they sent her to a rehab center far away out of the city so that she could get clean and be a good witness. Not that they cared about her life, but that she could be a good witness. So now they got her far away, rehabbing. Nobody knows where she's at. 
and she's going through it. Because when you're coming off of that heroin, let me tell you something, heroin is a physical high. And when you're coming off of it, you really feel it. It hurts in your joints, throwing up, bowel movements, all of that kind of stuff. It's a little different than cocaine. So when she's going through all of these withdrawals, she's thinking about her life. She's thinking about her son and what she has done to him and what she has done to their family. And the guilt, it becomes too much. It becomes too much. And she tries to commit suicide. And they find her hanging in her room. And they cut her down. They get her down just in time to save her life again. And they talk to her. They got her in therapy. So the, so the DA gets to try to put off. She hasn't used any drugs for months, but now she's dealing with the psychological effects of the lifestyle that she's led. So now they got her in therapy. She's talking in single individual therapy and she's got group therapy going on every day. And they're starting to peel back the layers. They're peeling back the layers of her life. And they're seeing that this woman has been abused at every stage of her life. When she was a teenager, she was sexually assaulted by a family member. As she got older, she ran into Wayne's daddy. And he got her out there using drugs, selling her body. All of these types of things gets her pregnant. She has Wayne, but now she's so addicted to the drugs that she has to have them every day. And the day of her husband's death, she blames herself because she asked him to go find her something. She was so sick that day. She was thrown up and she just needed a little something to get her through. So he went out and tried to find her something. And she continues to blame herself because she's the one that asked him to go out, not understanding that he was addicted as well and he was going to go out. He was going to get the drugs. She's feeling so bad that she didn't die. She wishes she would have died. But in therapy, she started to come to understand that she was a victim too, that she had been taken advantage of and that her son needed her. Her son needed her. So time passes. She's clean. She comes to the to the courthouse. The DA is set to trial. The judge is set to trial. She comes to the courthouse and she testifies that she has bought drugs from this local drug dealer multiple times. She testifies that she asked her husband to go buy drugs from him that particular day. Now, the DA has other witnesses that they've gathered that pointed to this local drug dealer as the one that sold Wayne's dad to these drugs. And the jury come back and they find him guilty. Now, in addition to the second degree murder charge, they got him for possession. They got him with firearms, fell him with a firearm. They got him with multiple charges and they find him guilty on all of them. And he ends up with about 60, 65 years. A lot of time. A lot of time. And these sentences are consecutive sentences, so he's going to be gone for a long time. Quite a long time. But now let me tell you a little bit about him. See, he came up rough, too. He came up rough, too. And to mask all of the pain that he went through, being abandoned by his father, mistreated by his mother, to mask all of that, he was on a quest to put together the perfect family. And what that did to him is he was with multiple women. He would be with this woman and everything would be good and he'd have a child with her. He'd find another woman, he would be her and everything would be good for a little while, but he'd have a child with her. He would always find something wrong with these women. And before you know it, he had 12 kids all over the city because he's trying to put the pieces of a puzzle together that he cannot, will not be able to achieve because of the pain that he has not dealt with and confronted in his life. But he has a son. He has a son. 
the same age as Wayne. And now his son is going to have to do without his father. Like Wayne is going to have to do without his father. And this is important because in these situations, there are no winners. So anyway, he's sentenced and sent off to prison. And he'll be there for quite a long time. Now, Wayne's mother, she goes on with her life trying to get it together. She tries to get custody of her son, Wayne, but the courts are slow to do it. So they put her through these programs. And every time she would get to the point of where she, she's doing good and she's about to get custody or got, and, and, and all of the visitation that comes along with that, she relapses over and over and over. Now, this three-year-old boy is about to become a teenager. And he looks at his mother as if she's somebody that he cannot depend on. But his grandmother that has raised him, her mother, he sees her as his mother. And he loves her. But she's getting old. But she can't continue to do the things that she needs to do to raise a young man. But she's done the best she can under the circumstances. So she talks to Wayne's mother. She tells her, said, look, I'm not going to be here much longer. You have to get it together. She said, we're going to go to the courts and we're going to talk to them about supervised visits together because you got to get it together. His life is depending on you. So Wayne's mother, she understands the message, but she's still in the throes of addiction. So they go to the courts and they try to convince the courts, but the courts says she has to at least be clean for 60 days before I'll even consider what you're talking about. So she, she goes 60 days without using. And it was hard. They go back to the court. The judge gives her limited visitation, supervised visitation. So she can come over to the house and see Wayne. Wayne is reluctant because every time he's opened his heart to her, she breaks it. So now he's standoffish. He wants his mother in his life, but he don't trust her. And he hasn't ever heard the true story about why his father's not around. So he asked her, what happened to my daddy? And she tells him the truth. And he looks at her with hatred in his eyes. And his grandmother, the one person that he loves and trusts, tells him, listen to me. She is an addict. And she was hurting. She did not know that that was going to happen. She had no idea that her life was going to end up like this. So she, instead of thinking about you, instead of thinking about you, she was thinking about the drugs. And she got him to go out and get some drugs. And it cost him. And now you're paying for it. But you got to forgive her. You have to find a way to forgive her. Because if you don't, you're going to suffer the rest of your life wondering what your life would have been like. And you need your mom. So they all cried. They hugged each other. And he tried. He put his best foot forward. And his mom, because of him trying, she tried harder. She tried harder. And she was doing just fine. Everything was working out just fine. Now she had a year under her belt. They went out for celebrations and they ate and they had fun. She didn't drink or anything like that. They had fun. They ate pizza and all of the types of things that he wanted to do. Whatever the celebration was about her, but whatever he wanted to do, they did. She had a job. Everything was working out just fine. And then don't forget the little boy that the drug dealer had. He's a teenager as well. And he's taken over his father's business. He's getting into the game. And he's hearing what the streets are saying about why his father 
is in prison. And he understands that it's on him to make sure that he takes care of his father. But see, the same pain that, that he, that Wayne was suffering, he was suffering. He misses his father too. And that anger that he felt because of the absence of his father, he directed that towards Wayne's mother. And he wanted to do something about it. Now, he's a teenager, new to the streets. And he was listening to a lot of the old heads that were in the streets, and they were telling him that he had to handle this in the streets. So he contracted with somebody that was close to Wayne's mother, somebody that she used to get high with. So he went to them, and he told them, look, I need you to bring her to this apartment. I need you to get her back on these drugs. I'm not going to do anything to her, but I want her to suffer like I'm suffering. She took my father away from me. Now, the person that he was talking to, she was in a, the throes of addiction as well. She was gone on. And she understood what he was saying, but that addiction was stronger than her rationale. So she was like, okay. I'll do it. So she goes to Wayne's mama. She tricks her and tells her she needs her help and all this and that, right? Now, Wayne's mama has been doing great. She's got a year some some plus in on being clean, and she's doing fine. She's working. She's showing up to work on a regular basis. This is that. But she gets over to this apartment, and when she gets there, the man, the boy that was the son of the drug dealer that's gone to prison was there with two other men. And they grabbed her and they held her down and they injected her with drugs, with heroin. And she's crying and begging and pleading with them, please don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to my son. But they didn't care. Now, the drug dealer's son, he's looking at her and saying, you don't even know me, but you took my daddy away from me. And she's staring at him with tears in her eyes. She doesn't know who he is. And she said, what did I do to you? You took my daddy away from me. And he tells her what his father's name is. Her eyes get real big, like she's shocked. And she looks at him and she sees it. She sees the resemblance and she stops struggling. She stops struggling. And she accepted what was happening. She accepted her fate. I'm an addict. I'm always going to be an addict. So she accepted it. She didn't even struggle with them anymore while they were injecting her with the dope. But what she didn't know, what she didn't know is that it was a hot shot. And a hot shot, if you don't understand what that is, that's dope, laced with poison, or super duper strong, uncut. Either way, it's lethal, right? So within seconds after the dope was fully involved in, in her system, she closed her eyes and she died. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. If you want to know what happened after that, tune into the next episode. Peace out.